All right. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and welcome to our cloud CCP series, Certified Cloud Practitioner, an exam of AWS. In this video, we'll be continuing further with our IAM, which we studied in the last video, Identity and Access Management. We'll be doing a practical version of it. We'll show you what are the resources you can refer to study more about for the exam purposes. Although what we have studied in the notes as the practical, more than enough, you don't touch anything after that, for especially for the CCP exam. Uh, the comment target for this video is also 150 comments. Let's see if we can do that in 24 hours. That would be super, super motivational for me. I also need fuel to constantly churn out the videos. And your comments are my only hope. Uh, that's the only motivation I have. I hope you will be motivating me and I'll be keep on making the videos. So let me take you onto the screen and we'll walk you through. So first and foremost is this is what we have. Uh, by the way, also wanted to mention you one more of the URL. Uh, if you go on to aws.amazon.com and what is AWS, uh, this is where you find about uh, all that happens on the AWS. And by the way, this is the place where you see about the global network of the AWS region. Uh, you can learn more about the AWS region. Just click on that and you'll notice there are 33 launched region, multiple AZs, 105 AZs, and that's pretty much. And these days they are also trying to reach you out on the edges as well. Uh, high populated zone also have some sub data center, not exactly data center, but a smaller version of it where computation can be done. And uh, a lot of, lot of, of them, you can try and see them based on how this is all going on. You can try the list view. There's so many views available. So uh, by the way, you can check them out if you wish. Uh, although there is nothing much to be checked around, but yeah, there is so much of that. Uh, there's so many of the coming soon. There's so many of them. Anyways, uh, let's go back. So we will be discussing about the IAM, Identity and Access Management. This is the console that you'll be seeing for the very first time. Maybe your console lit a little bit different because these applications are now drag and droppable. So you can change the view. This is the default view that we'll be going through. Uh, so first of all is this is my original account being logged in from the root user. I don't do anything with this account. This is just for the teaching purposes. And this is the root account. And also at the top, you'll see Northern Virginia and it keeps on, uh, it will load in a second. This shows you all the regions which uh, are available to you. And they are also nicknamed as US East 1, 1, 2, 3 and all of them. Uh, what's nearby to me is of course Mumbai. So I use, uh, mostly go with Asia Pacific. Now in Mumbai, so in my own country, it's available with the name of AP South 1. And another thing is, it is recommended that you don't use your root account for anything. So it is nice that you quickly move away from this account. We'll be doing exactly that. So go ahead and search for that. You can just search for IAM. I usually do that. Uh, it's very common in the world of AWS to actually acronym everything. Uh, nobody writes identity and access management. Even if you do, that's also good. But anyways, no matter how you actually access them, once you click and access on them, it will be available to you recently visited. So everything that you recently visit is actually available to you. So I'll search for IAM, just click on there and you'll see a dashboard here. Now security recommendations are probably going to be exactly same. I have no access key, active keys for this account. I'll show you how the programmatic access is being given in this video. And my root user don't have any MFA, multi-factor authentication, but the way, one we use in the production actually have this one. Once we have do all of this, we actually keep this account uh, somewhere that, hey, we don't want to use it. By the way, you can actually make your account aliases from here, just like click edit and all of that. Okay. Now, uh, let me actually move this a little bit here so that you can see probably a little bit more. Now, the most important thing that you have to go is on the left side of the dashboard. This is where the access management is given uh, for the users, uh, user groups. Uh, these are users, individual users. Then we have roles, policies, identity providers, account setting, I'll walk you through. The one which I was saying that I don't rely at much, which is access analyzer. It actually constantly monitor and analyze the behavior of the users who are continuously logging into your account or using your services. There are external accesses, unused activity, analyzer settings, then the credential report is also there and organization activity. We'll also touch a little bit about the service control policy. So there's a lot that we have to go through and uh, that's it, that's pretty much it. So as you can see, it looks a lot, but it is not. Okay, uh, the, by the way, the video is in 4K, so if you are having trouble in actually seeing any one of them, go ahead and work with that. So I'll keep it here so that we can see all of this. The first thing which is recommended is you can go into the users and you can actually create new users, which is 
Uh, not recommended. You should not do it this way. I'll actually dismiss this. Okay, so right now we have no users. Uh, this is how it should be. The step one is actually to create a user groups. Now, what we'll do is we'll create a group. Let's just say we want to create a group of admins. So I'll just go ahead and say admins. All of my admin users will go there. Just by creating the users, you can actually uh, put existing users into this account, but we'll not do that. Now you have a lot of policies that you can attach. Uh, admins need all the policies. So I'll just go ahead and search for admin. And the first you will search and look for is administrator access. This gives you full access to AWS services. This is exactly what I want for my admins. But let's just say I want to give permissions regarding EC2 only. So you can see there are Amazon services regarding uh, administrative access for EC2, provide full access to EC2. Whatever is the minimum permission, I can actually create a group for that. Right now, I'll just go for admin and we'll create an admin access. If you'll click on this plus, this is where you can see the policy in the JSON format. This is how it looks like. So you can see it's pretty easy to read. It says allow and this asterisk means everything. This is a wildcard character known for everything. Whenever you see that, that means everything is included or discluded. Discluded, not included. Okay, so we'll see the action and resources. So all the resources and all the action on those resources are allowed. When we see the resource-based policy in that the this is actually being configured a lot. But anyways, we don't see this much. Uh, what we can do is now, uh, just we have this, let's shrink this. And now all I have to do is scroll this and say create a group. And hopefully this will create a group of all the admins that we have. Now we have attached the policy to the admins, not to the user. Now let's go ahead and click on the user. Let's create a user and we'll create this one as a YouTube. I'll anyways delete this one. So I'll provide this user an AWS console so that he can log in. So just like that. And I want to create an IAM user not the identity center, although it is recommended, but I'll still use the IAM. Uh, we'll definitely talk about uh, some of the things about the identity center later on. You can use auto-generated password or custom password. In this case, I'll just use uh, auto-generated password. My password, okay. And then uh, I'll not allow, not say that you should change your password, although in the real world use cases, you really want to do that. Let's click on next. And then you can actually add them in multiple groups. In this case, I want to just add in, in the one group. Uh, you can also set the permission boundaries. We don't want to do that right now, but this is all the basics. Now we are adding the user to the group. This is a recommended way, but you can actually attach the policy directly to it. Not a good way. Uh, let's click on next. Then we have the tags. Obviously, in the real world production case, uh, every user gets a tag. For example, uh, this is user and this is of type admin. Uh, you can add more of them, like you have joiny, freshers, SD1, SD2, whatever is the role, you can actually do that. And then simply click on create user. And that's it, user is created. And you can actually show the password and download it and whatnot. You can do email the instructions as well. Now, apart from this, you can also go back into the users. Uh, yes, please. And when I click on this user again, uh, you will notice that actually there are lots of things you can do. In the security and credentials, you can actually go ahead and create a console, but you can also go ahead and create the access keys. This is how the access keys are created. This is programmatic access. So far, what we have given is only the console access. But after that, I click on this. I want the command line. Uh, just click on any one of them. It anyways create <laughs> the same things and uh, nothing to be worried. I understand this and I want to proceed. And description, tag value. Okay. Uh, this is always the hardest thing. Uh, this is for the code access. The reason why it's tough is you always have to come up what should be the tag value. It doesn't really matter even if you leave it empty, nothing much bother. So this is your key, looks like ID, uh, but it's a really long one. And this is your secret. Once you actually show this, you cannot actually see it again. Uh, so make sure you copy this carefully or you actually download this as a C CSV and make sure it is getting reached to the user securely. Uh, very carefully send that. Once you hide this, uh, that's it. There is no way of going. Once you leave the page, actually, there is no way uh, you cannot retrieve it. So they actually mention it. If you lose or forget the secret key, you cannot retrieve it. Instead, create a new access key. The old one is inactive. Okay, uh, let's create a done. 
even you have seen my access keys which is really really dangerous so i should really remove this account as soon as possible you also see the access advisor here that what resources you are using and what should be the advisors and all of that so this is all that is being done another thing that you'll be seeing is the role uh, you'll see that there are few roles which are already there these are roles and roles are meant to be assumed by the services they actually go inside them it's like they are taking uh, overtaking somebody or something like that so an IAM role is an identity that you can create for specific permissions and credentials that are valid for short duration only till you assume roles can be assumed by entities that you trust uh, basically majorly for the AWS services so they actually uh, assume these roles and go for that this is all it uh, then there are policies uh, these are the pre-built policies that Amazon gives you but you can create your all policies I'm allowing uh, create permission and view permission not the delete permission something like that you can actually do that by the way this is already available here but you can do that then we have identity providers as well uh, you can add the providers like how you want uh, the access of Amazon accounts and all of that not being much used then the account settings that how you want your accounts to be changing your passwords uh, what the policy should be there uppercase lowercase and all of that access analyzer is same now interestingly let's also check the service control uh, policies SCPs now SCP as you can see right now it says that you cannot do much the service control policies are only meant once you understand the organizational unit uh, right now we don't have that knowledge in the AWS that's not the topic we study but if I just show you the AWS organization you will notice that only right now we have one organization under this root which is the teaching account similarly I can go ahead and create multiple of these hierarchies now it makes it better for you to understand that once the root and teaching are there I can create devs I can create testers if I have acquired some I can actually go ahead and use that so this is really the nice but this is by the way just the teaching account that we have and we can go for this one we don't use it much so we don't create much of the organization account once we do create it's actually just for the teaching purposes we don't do it much all right uh, once we are having this one uh, that is it that is all you have to do if you want to actually uh, create any user delete any user just select this and delete it here I'll actually go ahead and do that because you saw the password of it so I'll just say YouTube and delete it and as you can see there is nothing too much to go hopefully it will delete yeah there we go it's gone but the group will still remain right now there is no one inside the group but that's it so this is all what we have in the AWS uh, that you should know about it uh, one another key important thing in your teaching account if you go into the account uh, if you are creating admins admins don't have the billing access if you want to give them the billing access uh, you have to actually go ahead and do it somewhere here let me just see in the bills no it, it should be supposed to be here oh it is here just below there uh, the long list just below there I am user access role so make sure you edit it and activate it otherwise the sub admin it's not sub admin technically it's admin they will not have the billing access billing access is only available to the root so that's it that is it your practical aspect about IAM and that's all you need to know now there could be one more video about how you can use your access keys and install AWS command line interface on your Mac or Linux or Windows and can configure into them that's also uh, not being asked but it's a good information to have so uh, by the way we'll not be going in that much of depth uh, we'll be just moving on to another topic which is the compute services that's it your practical and let's move on to the next video